it was almost one year ago when I got my <coughs> Chinese CNC uh, milling machine. And the video I created just a few weeks after I got it was, well, I think it was quite popular. I got a lot of questions. So I thought maybe I'd just make a short video of what happened in the last year and what is my final setup. So what you can see here is that I moved it to the corner of my, well, that's the end of my garage. It's not really a workshop. And uh, I, I put it into the corner because I'm not using it that much, so I thought maybe it's, it's best if, uh, if it's out of the way. And so I'm, uh, it's on an old kitchen cabinet that I got uh, from, the, uh, from the previous owner. So I use the kitchen cabinet to store the, uh, an old desktop computer, which I use uh, for, the, for the milling machine. And then I have, I think it's a 20 liter tank, which holds the, uh, the, the water. So once I shut these doors, this remains you know, reasonably clean. And uh, I have the controller here. It needs to be really close because actually the, the wires are quite short. And obviously I have the keyboard, the mouse and the, and the screen here. So the whole CNC is now in this uh, well, wooden box, which is, well, I did this just to keep the dust in. Um, I'm not sure if it's doing a particularly good job. So anyway, I, I thought maybe just to keep the dust in and maybe just to reduce the, the noise, I would build a box, but I never really closed it. So it has like three sides. So I think it's just like nine mil plywood and the base is like an 18 mil MDF. And it is very tight, so you can see that the that um, stepper motor is just barely clearing the uh, the side, and there is not a lot of space on the other side either. So I can't really put like huge materials in, uh, given the physical constraint, but it's fine. So I'm not using that much, and I started um, standardizing my materials that I use. So if I pan the camera, what you can see here is um, four, six mil and eight mil plywood and MDF. And this is what I'm mainly using for my CNC. And you can see that all of them are the same size. So I, I'm getting this pre-cut from my lumber yard and it's 350 times 500 mil because that's the, that's the safe size for me to use. So as I mentioned in the previous video, the, this model doesn't have any limit switches and I managed to bang some of the axes, you know, against the, well, sort of the stop and it certainly it's not nice. So um, what I ended up doing is I measured the, the actual physical extent of the machine and I've, I've reduced it by like five, five centimeters on each side and this is how I came up with this um, 300 by 500, 350 by 500 mil size. And um, I marked this corner here, which is again, quite a few centimeters from the physical um, X limit and the Y limit here. So I always place my material in this corner and then I have it line here, which runs all the way to here. So that's uh, fairly parallel with the, uh, with the machine. I think this is the y-axis and um, uh, this is how I'm using it all the time. So I'm using double-sided tape and I tape it down to this uh, uh, 12 mil MDF and I mill through and you can see all the stuff that I've been doing here. And basically um, I'm using this for the last year and I haven't changed it. I can obviously flip it around and then get a new one when it gets used. But so far it's working just fine. So the machine is fairly clean now. I have a, I don't think it can be called a shop vac, it's just a normal vacuum, um, which I'm using. And um, this brush end, it proves to be really, really useful. Um, so I just use this to clean up the, um, the, the surface once um, it finished cutting and I clean up the, you know, the cable track and everything as much as I can, but I'm not really doing anything else. So I just oiled it yesterday and I occasionally oil the axis and then some of the bearings, but not too much. And, um, and there are some 
there are a few places which are really difficult to get into. So I'm not sure if it's going to be the visible. So that's the that's the end of the uh, I think the x-axis. Um, and because I'm not using the end of the axis that much, so that one is quite dirty. But I mean, unless I disassemble the whole thing, it's really hard to get hold of. But the rest of it is is you know it's I think it's fairly clean. So you probably can see some sawdust there. But not too difficult to clean. If I had a little bit more space around, it would be definitely easier. And the fact that I can't really, you know, go to the other side also makes it difficult to, to reach to the back of the machine. But um, yeah, I mean, if you have some more, if you have more space, you might want to consider it building in a place where you can just walk around it. So in this year, I didn't have any troubles with the with the machine or the box itself. For some reason, the, the, the button for the pump failed. I think it was more like a mechanical issue because once I turned the power on, the pump would, would come on automatically, even, you know, regardless of this switch. And then, I don't know, after a couple of weeks, it was fine working again. I haven't taken it apart. So I was asked to go through the, the settings that I did in Mac 3. Um, what, which I'm going to do now, but it's pretty much the settings that um, were documented in the um, user's manual that I got for this machine, which is linked in the in the original video. I might need to refresh the link because my um, site has gone down for various issues. But um, but anyway, let's go through the settings now. <clears throat> so config and ports and settings. Um, if I remember correctly, the only thing um, I changed here is I changed the kernel speed to 45 kilohertz. And um, um, yeah, this is how my motor output looks like. So you can see the um, X, Y, and Z axis. Um, input signals, I think. Uh, yeah, so the probe is port 1, pin 15, active low, and the e-stop is uh, pin 10, active low. Other than that, there are no additional inputs on this machine, so uh, that would be all. Output signal. I don't think we are using any of the output signals, so this output number one is enabled, but I'm not think I don't think it's being used. Uh, there is nothing here, there is nothing on the spindle because it's not controlled and there is nothing here either. So that would be all about the, uh, the configuration. And then the next one is the motor tuning. So um, I'm using these settings. So X axis is 320 steps. Uh, the, the velocity is 2,500, the acceleration is 200, and uh, step pulse 5 milliseconds, direction pulse 5 milliseconds. And it's exactly the same for the Z, X, uh, sorry, the uh, Y, and the Z is 320, 800, acceleration 150, and again 5.5. Five. And um, that was all. Obviously, the spindle um, doesn't do anything because it's all manual. And uh, I think pretty much that was all I've, I've, um, I've changed on here. Um, and I think I made some adjustments on the jog as well. Uh, okay, what is it? It's five. Oh, yeah. So the slow jog rate is uh, 30%. I think it's 50 by default or something else. And um, so I measured my probe and I found my probe was 19.35 mil. So I set it here. Um, so I'm, I'm always using the tool settings and, and, and the probe. Um, seems to be working fine. So um, yeah, haven't done anything with that. And other than that, I'm still like a you know, pretty um, basic Mac free user. So I'm using the load G code. So these few buttons here, sometimes I use the rewind and the um, if I made some errors and I need to go back and I'm just using the start and the stop and that's pretty much it. 
I think I managed to, um, um, I had a large job and I broke the, uh, um, what is it, the, the, the end mill. So I, ha I was using a one millimeter end mill and um, it failed. And I was managed to find a step in the, in the program where it failed and I was managed to continue from there. And I saved the whole lot so I didn't have to rerun the whole thing. But that's, that was pretty much it. Um, from time to time, what I notice is that my machine freezes. So I, actually, this is one of those occasions. So you can see I'm moving the mouse around. Nothing really happens. And I'm clicking um, Alt F4. At the, uh, nothing happens. I don't know why it's happening. It's happening you know, from time to time, like you know, once in a month. Can't really do anything about it. I have to, re I have to reboot the machine. So whilst we wait for the, the machine to reboot, <coughs> just wanted to show all my um, well, failed attempts of using one mill and mills. So these are all the ones that um, broke for various reasons. I mean, mostly because I was probably using the wrong speed. And other than that, I bought uh, two more. So this is a, um, if I can make it to focus. Uh, so this is like a V cutter, but it has a slightly bit of flat end. Um, I used it once. And the other thing is, um, um, this would be good for 3D jobs, which I haven't done so far. And that's like a, like a bowl. Um, so the end is, a, is like a rounded. And but most of all, I'm using the one eight inch bit that I got with the machine, and I'm using that because uh, it's just much faster than the than the, the, the than the one mil bit. And in most cases, I don't um, you know I don't need a small radius it's that I can get with a one mil, and it's just perfectly adequate. And one more last screenshot of the settings. Um, so this is my um, parallel port settings. I think. Um, on default, this is set, try not to use an interrupt. And because I was playing around in the beginning, I changed it to use the interrupt. Um, again, I don't know if it's really, really necessary, but it works for me, so I just left it like that. Um, and the driver is standard, you know, Windows, Microsoft driver. Um, I have these settings here. I'm not sure if it makes any difference, but... Uh, this is how my LTP works, and it's it's working fine. I can't really see any issues with that. The the user manual says that um, when using this machine, you should use a spoiler board just like that, um, especially if you are cutting through the materials. And then you should first uh, make sure that this material, uh, this uh, spoiler board, is true with the with the gantry and all the machine. So I. Um, so you should create a G-code which basically goes through the entire spoil board and then just mills like a couple of mil off it uh, just to make sure that it's you know parallel with all the axes. I haven't done that because I'm not really using anything that precise and um, I don't really feel the need um, you know to make sure that my cuts are exactly like you know um, 0.1 or 0.1 mil precise. So, so far um, I'm just using as it is out of the box and I said that I'm using double-sided tape so that's the, uh, well I'm using just any double-sided tape that I can find in the, um, in the store but they started stocking this Taser uh, uh, one which works just great and so I have like you know about five or six strips based on depending on how small uh, components I'm cutting and um, well, obviously, I need to clean the board after uh, the board after that, and then get the, the the pieces of my my material and the and sometimes the the spoil board as well. And as I said, I'm not really using this machine for anything really really fancy. So at the moment, I'm just making some lampshades. Oops, freshly painted. Um, so I think you can get the idea. So all these 16 ribs and a couple of uh, the two rings which is holding them together. A slightly different design here. Um, 
adds another lamp part here and I got some drawings for a steampunk lamp um, which I'm cutting out of MDF. These are all um, uh, what you call it, um, plywood and I have another one and just a slightly different design it will go on the wall so these are the stuff that I'm using my CNC for I do have a few other projects I um, have a couple of videos on YouTube, really short ones but uh, um, the other thing is I'm mainly using the machine in the winter because in the summer there is about like 27 degrees here and when the machine is running you get just it just gets really really hot so the the spindle is water cooled that's fine but the stepper motors heat up so much and of course in the winter in the summer there is so much else to do so i don't have too much time to play with the cnc but it may change in the future we'll see i think that will be all if you have somebody uh, special request then just um, Put it onto the comments i might i may make another video to cover those other than that thanks for watching